Welcome to the She Will Shine podcast, where we bring you the real stories of female business owners. My name is Danielle Price and I'm the founder of She Will Shine, a supportive business network for women. It's time to give a voice to women in business and discover their journey. Hi everyone and welcome to the She Will Shine podcast. Before we begin, we would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the country on which we record this podcast, the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, and we recognise their continuing connection to the land, waters and culture. We pay our respects to their elders past and present. Now, in today's episode, we have the lovely Lou Carbone. How are you going, Lou? I'm great. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. It's such an honour. Thank you. All the way from sunny Perth. Is it a sunny day today? <laughs> about the same as you, apparently, about 29, 30 degrees. Yes, so Beautiful. another sunny day in Perth. For those who may not know Lou just yet, she is the founder of The Peppermint Tree, a space where busy women can find balance and vitality so that they can wake feeling energised and positive about themselves every day. Lou's passion is helping women achieve their health and wellness goals and to navigate the challenges of perimenopause and menopause. As a health coach and a hormone health coach, Lou guides women to make small but sustainable changes so that they too can live their best possible life. And I have a feeling, Lou, that we'll be having a chat off camera sometime soon about <laughs> Good stuff, good stuff. <laughs> Lou, I was sort of trying to um, kind of, I don't know you too well just yet. And, you know, I'd love to find out more about your journey. Mm -hmm. um when I guess when you were a child or teenager what was kind of your career aspiration did you know what you wanted to be when you grew up absolutely not <laughs> <laughs> absolutely not I had a wide variety of interests and hobbies I every, I used to help mum and dad out in the garden I used to help in the kitchen I I'm just looking at my bookshelf now on my bookshelf I can see like DIY natural remedies and herbal remedies and all sorts of interesting books that I used to collect even as a teenager so I guess I was a little bit geeky in, <laughs> in that <laughs> respect but then I was outside a lot as well I used to do a lot of hiking rock climbing kayaking sailing like you name it I like to try it so I I just like to try lots of little bits and I had yep. no idea what I wanted to do really but I ended up um, as a primary school teacher and then even as a primary school teacher, I really did not know where I wanted to settle. So I, I loved being in the classroom with the older kids, but then I loved teaching the younger kids too. And then one year I taught art and another year I taught computer science. <laughs> so I just like to do it all, I guess. But I wasn't, I didn't teach for a long time. I only taught for seven or eight years. And that was back in Victoria because I grew up in Melbourne, Victoria, um, and taught in Victoria and then there was actually a glut of teachers in Victoria and they were asking for redundancies and I was like okay oh, wow. pick me very different to <laughs> now stage, I was I just felt a little bit shackled by the system I yeah. guess um yeah wasn't didn't feel like I, I could really naturally expand in the system that I was working in. So I chose redundancy and I went traveling around Australia um, and only got as far as Perth. And here I am still in <laughs> Perth. I never went back. Um, and I still haven't done the top half of Australia either. So well, that's the next one. That's the next trip. That's the next trip. Absolutely. Yeah, maybe. Absolutely. Yeah. So I guess doing what I'm doing now has been a gradual progression over the years um, and it's come as a passion and a strong interest in the area of health. Yep. Um, so I remember like when my kids were, were little and now they're, like I said to you before, Danielle, they're 19, 23 and 24. But even when they were little, I was always looking for natural remedies to help them through their coughs and their colds and their earaches and, and that sort of thing. And I did a family homeopathy training course or something like that to help them to heal naturally should they be sick using homeopathy. So I was always looking at yeah. courses that I could do um to support our family 
Um, I did my PT course because I was fascinated with anat anatomy and that sort of thing and really interested in furthering my own physical training as well. So, yeah, the, my passions have led me to where I am now. But I guess um, Danny and El, Danielle and I were chatting before we started recording about how there's always a crunch. Well, there always seems to be a crunch time or a particular challenge that faces yeah. you or confronts you at some stage in your life that leads you to be where you're at now. And <laughs> we had quite a few crunches or challenges happen all at the same time in our household and that was when my youngest daughter was 13 and my middle daughter was 17 no yeah yeah 17 um my son was cruising along quite fine but he wasn't going through the hormonal changes that my daughter <laughs> obviously <laughs> my middle daughter she was competing on a national sports team and preparing to go overseas and she had incredible PMS and to the point where she would be rolled up on the kitchen floor which is concrete so it's hard and cold rolled up on that floor in pain um, every time her period was uh, coming up so and grumpy as all hell at that stage I we were working with various natural remedies but I didn't know enough to help her get through this so that she would be able to compete comfortably overseas and this was a big year for her um so she was in sprint kayaking and they were going to end up over in eastern europe and she was in like quite an elite team and so she said to me one day mum i don't want to be over there and have my period and not be able to compete because of the pain i said yeah look i get it yeah it was her last year in juniors so it was fairly important for her so she said can i go on the pill for six months and i said look it's your body. You're old enough now to make that decision. And she said, yeah, I just want to do it for the six months to get me through this and then go off the pill. I said, okay, cool. Let's do that. So she, she arranged all of that and everything seemed fine. The symptoms disappeared. She competed. She did well, got that over and done with. And then this was her year 12 year, three weeks before her ATAR exams. She ended up in Royal Perth Hospital with severe pancreatitis. Oh, my goodness. And this, as we found out later and I know now, was related to her going on the pill. Yeah. Oral contraceptives, right? Um, she was in very good hands and she got through that with the help of some specialists in the hospital and a, a professor and, and so on and so forth. So that was a crunch moment for us. <laughs> Yeah. And we learned a lot about our family health at that time because thankfully for us, that professor dived in deep and revealed several genetic conditions that are carried yeah. in the family as well. So that was that was eye-opening and sort of provoked me into learning even more about what was going on with her hormone or her hormones and so on. About the same time, my youngest daughter ended up in hospital. Oh, with goodness. giant again in hospital yeah. with giant blisters on her feet. Now, Danielle, the blisters were the size of mangoes. Oh my goodness. Her feet were covered. So she had a, a blister on the top of each foot, underneath each foot, around oh, the goodness. size of her feet. She could not walk. I was gonna say she couldn't wear shoes, she couldn't walk. She couldn't wear shoes, no, yeah. which is fine in Perth because it was summer, but she couldn't <laughs> walk either. <laughs> So she was getting around the house on a skateboard. Oh, we the had been to the GP and he was still trying to figure out what to do. Anyway, eventually he wrote us a letter and said, look, take this to the hospital and get admitted and they'll deal, they'll deal with it. So those blisters arose as a result of her being allergic to certain chemicals in physio tape. You know, the sticky tape. Yes, 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 so, yes. Yeah. A podiatrist had wrapped this tape around her feet because she's got flat feet, which were giving her some knee pain. And he said, let's do a little test while you go for a run, put this tape on and let's see if that helps with your knees. And if it does, then we'll fit you for orthotics. Okay. Anyway, it resulted in these giant blisters. Wow, who would have thought tape? Like here I'm thinking of food or something, a skin related, but tape. 
Yeah. So there was a, a good reason behind that too, we found out later. So she um she just to let you know everything's fine with her feet oh, too. Good, like good. we again we had remarkable doctors who um did a great job and she had skin grafts and this, that, and the other from the amazing Professor Fiona Woods who treated all the barley bombing victims and her oh feet are yeah. fine. So that's all good. But what we found out with going to a subsequently going to an immunologist who tested for various things. And like you mentioned foods, lucky for her, she's not sensitive to any particular foods apart from, well, gluten containing foods and, and dairy. Okay. So they're, they're big ones for a lot yeah. of people anyway. Um, but she's sensitive and intolerant to a lot of chemicals used in synthetic fragrances. Oh, wow. Yeah. So synthetic fragrances are made up of over 150 different chemicals normally, and they're in your everyday products, like your yeah. hand soaps, your makeup, your hair products, your um, skin that products. That would be like washing shampoo. powder, like clothes washing powder. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, washing yeah. powder, all of those things, yeah. So the immunologist said to us, look, Lou, you're just going to have to get rid of anything in the house that's got a synthetic fragrance. And I was like, cool, cool. So have you got a list of products I can use? And he's like, oh, no, not really. You'll just have to go and do your own research. How many years ago was this? This was six years ago now. Okay, yep. Yeah. Because yeah. I think now we're sort of cottoning on a bit more to these sorts of things, but it wasn't I know. so well so known about ago, back then. Let me tell you, there was very little information out there, but now there is a lot more information, thankfully. But I still feel a lot of people are very, uh, or choose to be ignorant because they don't have time. Yep. to do the research because believe me I spent hours in health food shops in supermarkets which was a waste of time in chemists which is also a waste of time but yep. not so much now sometimes there's good products um looking 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 reading labels yep and look and I thought that I was using fairly good things at home too like a lot of my products did say that they were clean and green or they were natural yep. or even they say they were organic but that's all misleading. It's all they're all buzzwords. They don't actually mean that they don't contain any synthetic chemicals. Yeah. Or synthetic fragrance. Gosh. So it was a huge learning curve for me. Um, and again, led me down a great big rabbit hole with her health because I knew there was more to it than just these yeah. allergies. And she, compounded with that, she has PCOS. So there's a huge there's a huge lot going on for her, but I'm so grateful that we found out all of this at such an early age and we know about it because, number one, it led me to, to what I'm doing now, but number two, both of my girls can go forward knowing that yeah. what they need to do to support their bodies forever and a day. which yeah, is how they can manage it on their own, yeah. Yeah, and knowledge is power, right? Yeah, 100%. When we know, when we, know we can do better. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. So, learning what I did about my girls and about hormones and about oral contraceptives and about synthetic fragrances and even um, Grace's journey with PCOS and all of that sort of thing. <laughs> At the same time, I was going through perimenopause, and that wasn't <laughs> fun either. <laughs> you had the trip, the trifecta, three. <laughs> just it just. I don't know, it opened my world to a whole new community and a whole new way of thinking and a whole new way of learning, which is fabulous. So yeah. one of the catalysts, I think, for where I am now, well, those were catalysts, obviously, but also I was introduced to Young Living Essential Oils. And that at the time was an absolute godsend because like I'm not plugging them or anything, but for me, it was a one-stop shop for non-toxic products. Yeah. So I was able to buy, thankfully, it saved me so much time looking on the shelves in the shops about looking for laundry powder and looking for hair products, skin products, everything came from them. But also a whole lot of learning came from mm. that community as well. And I started running little private workshops in my own home about these products and how they can help support your family and how you can avoid synthetic fragrances and how that can support your hormones. Then I was so fortunate that I met a lady who um, she was a yoga teacher or is a yoga teacher 
and we formed a bond and I was doing some classes with her. She would teach yoga and I would introduce the essential oils to help people through their yoga experience. And one day she said to me, oh, yeah, in my health coaching studies, I was like, well, one back. What did you yeah, just say? I was going to say, you ears pricked up. And so she told me about the course that she was doing, which I I think I went home and read about it and enrolled that very afternoon because I was so excited. And it turned out that a lot of the lecturers were people that I was already following on Instagram and reading their books and all of that sort of thing. So it all just sort of came together. Perfectly aligned, yeah. Yeah, it was so aligned. And it was I was able to consolidate the learnings that my own my own learning, I guess, my own studies, my own personal studies, and actually be certified for it so then I could actually launch my health coaching business do more with so it yeah, help more people yeah in a nutshell a yeah. rather large nutshell <laughs> <laughs> how it all came about but mm. I just love um Lou because I'm just you know listening to your story there was always a love of learning in there mm. like mm. whatever whatever the challenge was you're like okay yep I'm going to find out all about it. I'm going to learn about mm. it mm. and that's kind of led you to the next thing which led you to the next thing which led you to the next thing yeah so I just think that's um like it's just so inspiring because too often we are too busy you know the whole mm. too busy it's like oh well too busy we'll live you know you just live with stuff it's like something's annoying yes. me in my health journey but I can just put up with it I can manage it I can self-manage it but you don't know like the reason it's happening or um, the cause of it, all that sort of stuff. But it's like you're too busy to take the time to find that out, to actually overcome it. 100% Danielle. And that's exactly how my clients present. Exactly. Because they're busy doing other things. And I'm not saying I wasn't busy doing other things at the time, but I just, I have a passion for that. Other people have passion for different things. Do you know what I mean? So yeah. But, yeah, a lot of women to prioritise everybody else before themselves, their mums, their wives, they are colleagues, they are friends to everybody else, and then they forget about being a friend to themselves. Yeah. Where's that self-love? When are they going to give themselves that time to say, hey, there's something not quite right, I'm not feeling 100%. I know it's only a few niggles, but... I need these niggles to go away before they get turned into something more concerning. Yep. So I find 100%. that they don't turn that love onto themselves and prioritise themselves. Yeah. They don't give themselves that permission to do that for themselves. Yep. Whereas like you said, like if it's for your kids, you just do it. You know what I mean? It's like there's no questions asked. You're just like, yeah. okay, well, there's a problem with my kids' health, whatever, we've got to solve it. Yeah. But I think as women we too often just think, oh, I'll just self-manage it and then that, just keep going. 100%. 100%. And unless you have the time and the knowledge and the resources and the community around you, it's so hard to find that knowledge nowadays. So a lot of my, a lot of my clients will come to me and say, look, my doctor said blah, 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 and he said there's not much you can do about it. And I find that really saddening because... Unfortunately, in Australia, the doctors don't do the training that we need them to do to support us through perimenopause and menopause. So when you think about it, a, nearly half of a woman's life is spent in perimenopause and postmenopausally because we're living longer, right? So if you, yeah. hit, if you hit perimenopause, say, at the age of 48, Say 45, that's an even number. You can be perimenopausal at 39. You can be perimenopausal at 52, right? I'm just going to go 45 because it's easy to double it. So for, <laughs> say you hit perimenopause at 45, you possibly have a very good chance of living another 45 years, okay? So those 45 years will be comprised of a, another portion of perimenopause and postmenopause. Yes. Now, our hormones change radically during those periods and our hormones are responsible for so much more than having babies, which is disregarded here in Australia in particular and other countries around the world. It's not just Australia. Totally disregarded. It's everything else is the cause of the decline in our health. So 
very little knowledge is put out there between the the links about the links between estrogen and dementia and and other sort of concerns with brain health yeah or the link between estrogen and cardiovascular disease so we all sort of know, yeah, eat the Mediterranean diet and do some exercise and that sort of thing. And that's very valuable, never to be disregarded. But also there's a huge link between our decline in estrogen and our rise in cholesterol or increase in, in um, hardening of the arteries. Mm, yeah. But the two aren't tied together. So, yeah, just fascinating. I, the more I learn, the more fascinated I am and the more I want to educate women about it and, and let them know that they can do something about it. And it's not hard. Like yeah. the steps or the strategies that I introduce them to, they're not hard. They just require a little bit of you dedicating a little bit of time to yourself instead of every other Tom, Dick and Harry. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah. And that's the thing, right, long term, that's going to be a short time compared to the time you're taking self-managing the issues. Mm. 100%. Yeah. That's a good point. Good point, yeah. Um, just a short time and a relatively small amount of money. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, when I... I know how much some people spend every month at the chemists on pharmaceutical drugs because they have to, so they think, and that's their prerogative, that's their decision. But if they've invested that earlier on into preventive, protect, yeah. no, preventative care and knowledge, maybe they wouldn't have to spend that later. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So, Lou, where, you know, you, you started doing the workshops with the yoga teacher is that when you began your business like was that when you sort of said I'm going to do this as a business no so I did my I finished no I didn't even finish my studies <laughs> <laughs> I probably should have finished my studies but I didn't I just started talking a lot about what I was doing on Instagram and I Shannon Dunn is my business coach yeah. and she's like just launch some programs now I was like what she says, launch them now. And I did and the people came. And do you find that because of the nature of your business, you know, talking about perimenopause and menopause, um, that, like, you know, we don't talk about it. You know, it's not something, like, now people are talking about it more, but it's it's more kind of you get a bit embarrassed talking about it or you don't yes. mention it or. Yeah, like I was talking to a lady the other day and it was almost as if like she was experiencing quite strong symptoms of perimenopause like um, insomnia and um, hot flushes and mood swings and that sort of thing. It, it was almost as if she was ashamed to admit it. But why? It It's actually in that. So perimenopause and menopause are stages where just like puberty, are stages we all have to go through. But fortunately for us, the knowledge is there now to find out how we can make those stages more comfortable for us through nutrition, through exercise, through clever supplementation, through supporting your hormones in, in with various lifestyle factors, yeah? So, yeah, the knowledge is there. It's just not spoken about enough. And I guess... Danielle, like we seem to have lost, this is where you're, you, you, you're great because we seem to have lost that community or that village feel. So I think like what you're creating with She Will Shine helps that, like it's a supportive community for women where hopefully women can feel free to express their thoughts, feelings, emotions, desires. Yes, a safe space. A safe yeah. space. But how many do do women in general have that opportunity nowadays to talk about that? That's what we, we need to create, I feel, yeah. yeah. You know, technology and all that's wonderful, but we kind of, it's isolated us as well. And I know COVID and all that happened, you know, throw that in the mix, but it's kind of like we're also busy doing the things. Yeah. And when we're not busy doing the things, we're attached to some sort of technical device um, <laughs> and not looking like I tell You're my still kids. still doing the things on that technical yeah. device. Yeah. I, say, I, t I go driving with my with my son in particular and he's in, how old is he? He's 13 now, so he's got a phone. And as we're driving, he's looking at his phone, right? Looking at his phone like this. And I'm like, yeah. put the phone down, look out the window. 
Yeah. What do you have yes. to do that's so urgent? Look out the window and see what's going on in the world. Yes, 100%. I hear you. I hear you. Actually, I just read, um, oh, last year I read the book, The Red Tent. I can't remember who it's written by, but you'll find it if you look for it. And it was about women in biblical times and the fact that their cycles were all in sync with the moon, the phases of the moon. And they went into the red tent when they, their menstruation started and they would talk about how they felt and they were respected for that time of their month. Whereas now that time of the month is often looked as, at as oh, such an inconvenience Yeah. to the point now where a lot of younger women, thankfully not my daughters, but a lot of younger women are like, I'm just going to take the pill so I don't have that time of month. It's not respected as a normal part of your life and something to be eternally grateful for yeah. and something that you can manage so that it doesn't interrupt your life that's right it's an inconvenience and interruption yeah so Lou do you find now that you know you launched your programs how long ago did you launch so a couple of years ago now yep um, and I started taking private clients and I still have private clients but as I have a passion for learning, you can understand I have a passion for teaching and sharing knowledge as well. Of course, <laughs> education background too. That's right. So not long after, I, probably about six months after I started taking private clients, I remember thinking, wouldn't this be cool to have a whole group of people that I could, I could empower with this knowledge? So then I started running group programs as well. I love your passion about this topic. Like I think it's just, it just like exudes out of you when you're chatting about it. <laughs> what has been, like, what do you think, think about, you know, from when you sort of started your business or thinking about starting a business to where you are now, what do you think has been firstly the most challenging aspect of it? And secondly, like what's brought you the most joy? What are you most proud of? I can't answer that second one. Oh, because, too do many? you know why? Because every small thing that a client yeah. achieves brings me joy. Yeah. Like even saying, Lou, I've swapped out five coffees for doing a green juice in the morning. And I'm just doing my green juice in the morning and I don't have coffee for the rest of the day. I don't have coffees, full stop. Whereas before it was five coffees a day. That brings me so much pleasure. Yeah. Or ladies that say, oh, those tweaks in my nutrition have meant that my cycle is better and I don't get headaches anymore. Oh my God, I'm having a party. So on my desk, I have these little pink cards and I write all of those sort of things down and I pop them in my jar, in a jar. That's oh, I love that. Yeah. yeah. So if I'm having a down day or I'm having a moment of self doubt or something like that, I read through those and I'm like, wow. My knowledge has helped me to help those women and I feel I feel great about that, that they have a better quality of life now. When you say that, I'm seeing the similarities to what you do and what I do because we've both built a community um, of these women and me achieving amazing things. And it's mm -hmm. like every one of their wins is your win. Yes, yeah, yeah, 100%. So it's not the dollars in the bank or the number of clients, it's... Their wins are our wins. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Um, and you said the most challenging? The challenge, the most challenging. Oh, the behind the scenes stuff, Danielle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the stuff we try not to share on social media. <laughs> oh, my God. It's the writing of the writing of resources. Sometimes I love it. Sometimes I'm over it. But, like, the... When I think back on the last 18 months, two years, it's like, yeah, putting the website together, putting all the payment links there. Um, and, you know, don't get me wrong, once they're there, they're, they're there and that's fabulous. It's great to have these systems. But some days you're like, did I really achieve anything today? But if you don't put all those systems in place, then you can't give that time to your clients. So, yes, you did achieve something. <laughs> yeah, I know it's hard, but you have to learn so much. Yeah. Like you've got to be an expert in whatever your business is and whatever you're right. offering, but then you have to be an expert in everything else. Yeah, like we do our own marketing, we do our own invoicing, we do our own 
like everything, like you said, website development, everything. Yeah. That's so true. Yeah. So, so true. So good Lou. on you, all you women in business, because it's not easy some days. There's so much juggling, so much going on. I often say we're like, like we're recording this. Um, so we're like from the chest up here in, in screen, but like below the surface, our legs are just like going yeah. crazy. <laughs> always always rubbing an essential oil or something on me to get my brain right I'm like I'm overthinking what oil am I going to reach for or yeah. I'm stressing about something what oil am I going to reach for right take five deep breaths use the oil like all the time I think we all need a bit of you in our life with that <laughs> I feel like this Lou what do I do <laughs> it brings me great pleasure because I really recognize and understand how busy women are now there's so many demands on our time now so many demands you know with kids wanting or, or kids being interested in so much so many more things and schools promoting so much more for kids so you're running around after your kids more um the cost of living is in, is increasing so you know nearly every single household has both parents working to some degree um it's the, the social managing kids and social media is really hard to and I'm thankful that my kids are that bit older because I never had to spend that time with them on that but that must be a huge pressure on younger mums too so I don't know and women are staying in the workforce longer there's just so many more pressures there's some so much more going on for people so I understand why they let their health slide but it saddens me um, and that's yeah. where I hope that, you know, I can step in and, and help them. I've got one more question for you, Lou. Did you ever think that you would run your own business? Um, I didn't ever think I wouldn't. And I think, so I've always been involved in our own businesses since I married my husband 25 years ago. So he had a cabinet making business and he immediately seconded me from the nice job I had at the time to helping him out there so I had to learn the basics of business to help him run the cabinet making business and then we did a bit of building and I would help with that not the building but the book work behind <laughs> it <laughs> so all of that has also you know put me in good stead for what I do now so I knew that running your own business wasn't out of reach yep but it wasn't an aspiration or that I had it was it just sort of it came at the right time I guess it just happened at the right time yeah, yeah. I always find it interesting because I never had any like it wasn't even part of my like thought process you know what yeah. I mean like I never even thought I could run my own business I just yeah. kind of uh, you know, from high school, I went to uni. I got like I was one of those kids who knew what they wanted to do. Went to uni, got a job. Like that's yeah, that was the, all norm, thought, the normal the progression. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And but I never even entertained the notion. Like it just didn't come up in my mind. And I find it really interesting because um, some of our other podcast guests and some of our other Shilshai members have said, "Oh, yeah, I've always wanted to run my own business." I'm like, oh, I never had that. It's like, is it because there was no role models for me to kind of think? maybe I could you know what I mean like what you put that saying you can't be what you can't see yeah so I just find it really interesting because we're all you know we've all all our Shilshan members have come to this point in their business but it's like did we ever think we'd be here yeah so when you've asked other ladies of that what sort of response have you got like have most people said yes I've always thought that or have most people been like you like or amazed? I think it's it's like a mix there's no mm. definite answer um mm. I know one of our recent podcasts with Sasha Jones she had an entrepreneurial mother and so she yes was I listened always, to Sasha yeah, yeah that was yeah. a great story um yes. but she always had that role model in yes. her life and it's like well you know I guess if you grew up in that environment you kind of sparks your imagination a bit of what you can do exactly but when you're not exposed to it mm. It's mm. just not part of your reality, not part yeah. of your kind of um, world. No, that's right. Exactly. Yeah, it's fascinating. Yeah, I look forward to listening to some more of the podcasts, to listen to see how other people, other women have evolved and how all their businesses have evolved. Yeah. Like I said to you before we started recording, we all come from different industries and different backgrounds and different locations and all these types mm. of things. 
but there's always like I think for us what I'm seeing the common threads are there's a love of knowledge and a love of learning mm -hmm. tick the box there Lou <laughs> but there's also a determination yes. to solve a problem yes. and not leave it up to someone else to fix yes and yeah. then I think number three is that we're all doers. We just do. Something yeah, comes up right. that needs addressing, we just do it. You're right. Fix it. We do whatever we need to do to move forward. Yeah. So, um, yeah, there's a lot of similarities Yeah. in our stories. Fascinating. Yeah, we take responsibility to lead the way, to find out, to do. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah, yeah, 100%. What an awesome note to end our conversation on, Lou. Thank exactly. you so much for the chat. <laughs> Thank you for having me. It's been lovely. And you've made me feel so comfortable. Thank you, Danielle. And I'm really oh, enjoying God. our WA catch-ups over here. We have very lovely, we have lovely social catch-ups here. Nice coffee morning. It's been, been tremendous. Lovely. Yeah. I will get over there to visit soon, Lou. I hope um, so. I have to give you an in-person hug. You know what I'm like? I'm a hugger. <laughs> so I cannot wait to get over to Perth and to give you all um, a big hug in person. Fabulous. We'd love to see you for sure. To give me plenty of notice. Make sure that I am free on the day. <laughs> clear the calendar. Danielle's coming. <laughs> you might have to clear a few days, Danielle. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, thank Lou. You, lovely. Appreciate and it. Have a lovely day. Thank you to everyone for joining Lou and I on today's She Will Shine podcast episode. We will be back next time with another fabulous story of a female business owner. See you later. Thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed this episode of the She Will Shine podcast, we invite you to check out shewillshine.com.au. She Will Shine is the essential support network you need to grow a thriving, meaningful business. We can help you grow your network, connect and develop genuine relationships, be supported and support others in building and growing a successful business on your terms. Say goodbye to working alone and become a member at shewillshine.com.au.